All right, so let's do one more fundamental theorem example, um, this time with the function uh, vector field in R3. Okay, so we're going to do three-dimensional example. Here's our vector field. Here's our curve. So we've got a pair of line segments. Um, I think I, I neglected to mention in the video where we talked about the proof of the, of the fundamental theorem that if you're dealing with a piecewise smooth curve, the proof we wrote down, of course, only really works for smooth curves if you go and look at the details of that proof. Uh, but if, you're, if your curve is the join of a whole bunch of smooth curves, right? if you have a whole bunch of smooth curves joined together, right? so the overall thing is only piecewise smooth, um, you can apply the fundamental theorem to each part separately and the intermediate pieces cancel out. You get sort of like a telescoping sum. Everything collapses down and again the only thing that really matters is the initial point and the final point. Um, so if we're lucky and this thing is a gradient, then this point in the middle, the fact that we're going from here to there via this intermediate point, it's not going to matter. All that's going to matter is where we begin and where we end. All right, so here's our vector field. Um, you can probably already guess. I think you might be able to look at this one and already guess what your function should be that's going to give you the gradient. This one definitely does um, come from the gradient of some function. Um, let's suppose it wasn't so obvious, right? I mean, this one, I think we can see that it is going to work, but suppose it's not clear. How do you, how do you test? So how do you test for a vector field being conservative, right? How do you test to see if it's a gradient? Well, we know, or at least you know if you've done your assignment, we know that the curl of any gradient has to be zero. Um, so what this means is that if you calculate the curl of your vector field and it's not zero, um, well, in this case here, it's definitely not conservative, okay? There's no way it can possibly be a gradient if the curl is non-zero because we have this identity, okay? So that means that you're hoping that you compute the curl. All right, so here's kind of an initial check, right? It's, it's similar to that, that check on the partial derivatives that we did um, for the vector fields in the plane. Um, now, again, we've discussed this a little bit in class that this doesn't guarantee that your vector field is conservative. Um, but it has a chance. Uh, we might even say probably. Okay. Um, we could talk about conditions perhaps in another video. We'll see how this one goes. We could discuss the conditions that uh, let you know when this is actually a sufficient condition. It's certainly necessary. Uh, it's not quite sufficient. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can, we can do this check, right? So we can say for this vector field, what does the curl look like? So the curl we'll do the whole 3 by 3 determinant trick i, j, k x derivative y derivative z derivative e to the y x e to the y 2z plus e to the z. And we expand this out. So in the i component, this doesn't depend on y, so that derivative is 0. This doesn't depend on z, so that derivative is 0. In the j, doesn't depend on x, doesn't depend on z. And for k, well, the x derivative here gives me e to the y. The y derivative gives me e to the y. e to the y minus e to the y gives me 0. So we have the 0 vector, so it checks out. Um, I might as well tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the, the punchline here. Uh, it's maybe, we say probably, well, um, yes, if the domain of your vector field is 
all of R3, okay? If there are points where the vector field is undefined, then you have to be a little bit more careful. You have to start getting into some topological conditions on the domain. So you have to talk about the domain being connected and simply connected, you get into these issues. Um, but this is defined everywhere, so we're fine. So now, how do we find, how do we find our function? If you can eyeball it, if you can look at this and you can see that it works, then go ahead and write down the answer. That's perfectly fine, okay? If you're, if you're staring at this thing and you can't tell um, where these are coming from, if you can't tell what function you started with to get these partial derivatives, you work backwards. You say, okay, so I know that if this is going to be a gradient, then this first component must be the x derivative, okay? And that implies that my function, it must be, so we take the antiderivative, that gives me an x, x e to the y, right? But there might be, so our kind of constant of integration, if you want to call it that, is actually a function. It's something that doesn't depend on x, right? Anything that doesn't depend on x, its derivative would vanish. So there might be something that depends on y and z. So then we look at the, the second component. We have x e to the y. That's, we want that to be the partial derivative with respect to y. And so now we say, okay, so we should have... Well, actually, nothing happens when you do the antiderivative, right? The antiderivative of e to the y is e to the y. And there might be something that depends only on x and z, something that doesn't depend on y. So, so far, you look at this, and you're starting to think, okay, yeah, yeah, that seems like things check out, right? Things match up. Um, but we still have one more to consider. So now we have to say, okay, we also have 2z plus e to the z, and that's supposed to be the partial with respect to z. So we do the antiderivative, and so 2z is the derivative of z squared, e to the z is the derivative of e to the z, okay? But there might be some function, let's call it g3, that depends only on x and y, right? Because if I take the partial with respect to z of something that doesn't depend on z, it's going to be 0. So now you, you kind of compare, and you're like, oh, wait, okay, so there's this x e to the y, x e to the y, there's no, that's missing, right? But that's something that doesn't depend on z. It must be this, right? And then you say, okay, what about this, this G1, this G2, um, what is that? Well, that must be this bit here, right? This bit that depends only on Z. That's something whose partial derivative would go away when I do either the X derivative or the Y derivative, okay? So you make those identifications, you put things together, and you say, okay, it looks to me like my function should be X e to the y plus z squared plus e to the z, All right? Now, the other thing you can do, right, if you, if you can see that right off the hop, and probably you could see it here, right? Write it down, confirm that it works, right? Write down your function, take the gradient, confirm that you get back the original vector field, and then nobody's going to question you. You're going to say, yes, obviously. You took the, you wrote down this function, you took the gradient, you got the vector field, it must be the right thing. Yeah, that's fine, you can do it that way. Now, um, what's the final punchline here? If I wanted to do the integral along C of f dot dr, well now I know that my f is a gradient. It's the gradient of this function f, so it must be f at 0, 1, minus 1 minus f at 0, 0, 0. So I just have to plug things in. What do I get? Um, at 0, 1, minus 1, so x is 0, y is 1, z is minus 1. So that's going to be, so this term goes away. That's a 1, 
that's an e to the minus one. So I get I get one plus e to the minus one. And then at f of zero zero zero, that goes away, that goes away. I get uh, well minus e to the zero, which is minus one. So I get one over e for my integral. Right? And and so if you wanted to, you could go ahead and try to do this directly, right? Parameterize this line segment, do the line integral, then parameterize this one, do that line integral, add the two line integrals together, see what you get. Personally, I would rather do this, right? Um, that's going to be a lot less work, okay? That's why we want the fundamental theorem, right? It's why we want most theorems. It's because it probably saves us trouble somewhere along the road.